Well, good morning again, degenerates. You know what fucking time it is. It's time again for another deep dive into New World. And guess what? We've just had a lovely little release hit us right today. At least the day that this is being recorded. Who the fuck knows when I'm going to release it. We've got a letter to the community. Now we're going to run through it just like I've done with all the other deep dives. I think this will be worthwhile. I think that there will be some value that they add here. So let's just fucking get right into it. Now, as I've said before in all my other deep dive videos about the website, this is going to be for the people who are too lazy to read the website or too busy in their day. And they want to put this in the back on in the background while they do their dishes, while they spank their wife. Who knows what the hell they're doing there? But hey, I understand. I get it. It's not fun reading. It's rather better to hear it in the background while you do other shit. So that's who this video is for. I hope you enjoy. So let's see what we got here. A letter to the community. Released on March 13th of 2020 in the general tab of the New World website. Looks like we've got a lovely little image of what's going to happen when people start breaking into the, the houses of all those people storing all that toilet paper for the coronavirus lockdowns. But let's get into it. Let's see what they've got to say to us. Hello, New World Adventurers. We've been live with our latest alpha for over a month now, and it feels like the right time to send a letter to the community. We've learned a lot, and we wanted to take a moment to update you on the state of New World's alpha and give you some insight into our future plans. Thanks to all the alpha players, you've helped us a ton. God damn it, Amazon, I wanted to be one of them. The feedback on new features has been awesome and players have helped us find bugs and new design opportunities that we wouldn't have pursued otherwise. Special kudos to Stryker who found a way to claim territories outside the play space and to Dr. Dank Meme, fucking brilliant name, Jesus, for finding the infinite coin exploit and to all of you for submitting so many crazy bugs. This is great to hear. You see, this is the point of an alpha. This is why I was so excited to know that they had restarted the alpha. They were going to find new bugs. They were going to let a whole bunch of people in to discover what was wrong with the game, what was holding them back, and this is how they fix things. Like I said in that video of, about PvP, these devs are not idiots and they will listen to their community. They had a problem with griefing and I think they overreached with it, but it meant that they were willing to listen to their community. They were willing to hear people out and this is the result. We get a good game with better quality and they are listening to the community itself. So on the 5th of March, we released a major game update called Factions at War, which introduces compelling new PvP experiences that we believe to be core to our game. Players will now have control over the actions leading into company versus company war by completing missions that require PvP flagging as opposed to simply declaring war with coin. This puts more power in the hands of the players as opposed to the company leaders and creates a fun race between the factions along the way to war. Oh, oh yes, please. Mm. Just uh, rub me down in butter and have your way with me, Amazon. Yes, this is what we wanted to see from you. We wanted to see you actually give a shit about your players. And guess what? You haven't disappointed us at all. Let me just fix my camera there. God damn, I'm fucking tiny in this. There we go. Now you have to suffer as much as I do because you have to see my damn face. This is a great thing to see because this means that you're not putting power in the hands of one single person, but instead you're distributing it over a network of different people. This is great to see. This is how you fix a game. You play through the alpha, you get people to test your game, and you fix it. I am so fucking happy to see this. I was worried about concentrations of power within single players that then get an advantage over everyone else. That was one of my major concerns for this game, and it looks like they're willing to solve it. They seem to have solved that problem when it comes to company versus company war problems, and hopefully this is a good indication of what they're going to do for other elements of PvP in the future. So these new features bring us closer to our original vision for New World. For us, New World is always centered on the following core principles. A massive supernatural world that actively confronts the players that attempt to conquer it. Check, I think they've checked that list. Skill-based combat that is tactical and deep at any scale. From what I've heard and what I've seen, I think they've checked that off the list as well. 
progression systems that foster player agency. Now that one's a little bit iffy to me. I'm not sure how much player agency we're gonna get until I play the game. God damn it, Amazon, all you had to do was let me into the alpha. I would have sucked you. Intersecting game systems, crafting, gathering, killing the corrupted, etc. That allow all players to contribute to group goals. That is great to see as well. Holy hell, an actual integrated system, a system where people have to work through different interconnected systems within the game to get to the best solution. That is what we want to see. We don't want to see these separated little systems where none of them are connected and then you have to try and figure your fucking way of what is worthwhile. Then you question why the hell the rest of those things are even in the game to begin with. And finally, territory conquest and control systems that allow players to create and manage player-driven governments. Politics. The thing we all love to hate. We get politics, we get player agency, at least when it comes to territory conquests and control systems. Now that is exceptional. That is really what I wanted to see. As we work towards finishing the launch features, we've been listening intently to the feedback around the balance between PvP and PvE. Our vision is to create a world where the playstyles of PvP and PvE players will not only coexist, but will complement each other. We know that this will be a challenging balance to strike, but we will iterate on our game design until we accomplish it. That is good to see. Iteration. Setting down a milestone goal and working towards it slowly, not expecting to fix it in one fucking patch and then pretending everything is better when it's not. This will be a tough balance to strike. They know that. The devs are not idiots and they're working towards it. God damn. Fucking stop. My dick can only get so goddamn hard. <laughs> We want PvP players to benefit from the work of PvE players and vice versa. We've been building systems to support this. Factions, crafting, town projects, town progression, war corrupted breaches, influence missions, and soon invasions. This is good to see. This means that all players will get something out of this game. PvE players will get something out of this game and PvP players will get something out of this game. Now, what I'm hoping here is that means there's not going to be a content drought for either PvE or PvP players. I'm hoping there are no gigantic chasms where that are filled with PvE when you're looking for PvP or filled with PvP when you're looking for PvE. Now, will they strike that balance immediately? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think they will immediately strike that balance, but I do think they they've made it clear that they can work towards making sure that balance does get sorted out as the game continues to develop. I wouldn't be surprised if by the time the game releases, they've already got a patch ready in the wings and waiting to make sure that they fix some of the most crucial issues. These different playstyles will complement each other and enable players to get better gear deal with problems in the game, accomplish missions, and grow their characters, territories, and skills together. Some of the key motivations for PvP are better rewards, controlling space, dominating others, and high-stakes gameplay. And new features, influence race, coin rewards for PvP, and PvP damage scaling are getting closer to reflecting the higher risks in PvP with better rewards, which should have the effect of allowing players to show their PvP dominance, as well as draw in more PvE players willing to take on the heightened stakes in pursuit of those rewards. Thank God. Good fucking rewards for good hard playstyles. Now I'm hoping the only thing that they can avoid is ensuring that there's not one big dick build that dominates every other type of playstyle and that everyone chooses that singular meta build instead of branching out, finding your own comfortable playstyle and then working around different problems by knowing how to do that. We have some feature expressions around controlling space that we'll watch to see that it is appropriately rewarding and make adjustments if not. That again is just good to see that they're willing to change their rewards for systems just to make sure that everything's balanced out. 
In addition to balancing PvE and PvP, we've been working feverishly to create a seamless open world MMO with a mix of sandbox and directed style gameplay. Now I do think they should have stuck more towards the sandbox side of things than directed style gameplay, but I can understand the balancing act there. You don't want it to be too sandboxy because if you do, then it's kind of pointless. It's like tossing a bunch of square Legos at someone Someone might build something incredible and the dumber players might not be able to understand. Some directed style gameplay is pretty helpful for getting people to ease into the game. You're not throwing them in the deep end, seeing who sinks and who swims. Now it gives a much smoother gradient for players to integrate into the game. I think this is a great way to broaden your target market without having to alienate the people who are going to go out of their way, find high skill cap plays, find high skill cap techniques and just dominate the hell out of everything. We want to players to have quests as an option to level and explore, but not to be required to do them. We are not trying to build a theme park MMO. Oh, that's a, that sounds very directed. Mm, I, want, I wonder who they're talking about there. Ooh, mm, a theme park MMO? Hmm, huh. Can't think of who that might be, so we might as well just carry on, huh? So far, the results have been good. Our first player to reach level 60, Gildan, did only 38 missions along the way, while our second player to hit 60, Nuko Miko, did over 700 missions. That shows a lot of variation. That shows a lot of range. That shows that you can play how you want and get to the end game. That is a good indicator of what this game can do. I don't know to what degree that is true, but it is a good first sign that there's that much of a wide range. Part of being focused on our players means we listen closely to what they tell us, both through their feedback and their playing. We study many types of player data, playing the alpha with you a lot, are always listening to chat, talking to players and reviewing the surveys. We use all of this to help us refine our game and determine which features to prioritize and what balance modifications we need to make. All of this while staying within our core vision to build a seamless open world MMO with a mixture of directed and sandbox gameplay with balanced PVP and PVE play. Now, this is what I was wondering about. Where, what are they targeting? What is their direction? And this is telling us what their direction is. They are looking for a balance between two elements to push themselves in a certain direction. They want PvE and they want PvP, but they don't want it to be a theme park ride. They want some player determination behind how things play out. They want to give people the ability to choose their play style, not just in the way they fight, it seems, but in the way they play the entire game. This has helped us to balance TTK, time to kill, refine the damage scaling for PvP, Spoiler, this is coming next release. Rebalance equipment load and improve quests by keeping the goals closer to home. All that's really about right there is refinement. They're tuning the systems that are already good. They're making them better. They're making them fairer and they're making them more balanced. That is good to see. And the fact that they're doing this in an alpha stage already, which I mean, technically every game should be doing, not that they do. This is a good sign that they are invested in this game, that they want this game to not only do well right now, but they want this game to be viable way into the future. Game development is all about listening to feedback and iterating. The best way to iterate is to find the limits, which means often pushing past those limits. Players let us know that our initial implementation of open world full loot PVP last year was too punishing. We believe that the Factions at War release is getting close to the right balance of PvPVE. We are seeking this work through town projects and faction missions, and we expect the Influence Race PvP missions will entice PvE players to dip their toes into the PvP pool. I do think they may need to start looking at splitting the player base into a PvE server and a PvP server. 
Now, what I find interesting about that is you can't have a pure PVE server based on what I'm reading here. What you would need is a toggle on toggle off PVP server, and then a server that is full PVP hardcore. I think that would be a good balance. I think as this game starts to expand out, because I expect tons of fucking people to want to play this game. Holy shit, I think there's gonna be a lot of people. And I'm scared for their servers because their servers are going to take a real beating unless they're ready for the flood of people who I think are going to want to play this game. So I'm saying maybe they want to look into one hardcore system and one a little bit more gentle, you know, we give you a little Vaseline before we dive in and you don't have to bite the pillow because we're going in dry kind of system. But all that I'm seeing here is a great thing to read. This is how you address your fan base. This is how you talk about a game and how you talk about fixing it up. Instead of a certain person who stands up and says, we're sorry, we'll do better. Um, bye, thanks for listening. I've seen discussions and want to be transparent and clear that we have no plans to bring back open world full loot PVP. Now that's a little bit disappointing for me, but fair enough. But I'm liking mostly what I'm seeing here, and at least they're making their intentions very clear for what they want to do. The vision is a world where PvP and PvE players can coexist and complement each other, which could not be achieved with full loot open world PvP. We will continue pursuing our vision, adding features and content aligned to our pillars, and we are excited to embark on this path together. Before wrapping up, I thought it would be fun to share a couple service stats. Starwater crafted over 50,000 tier 1 swords, and we are convinced he found a cheat. But when we dug in, it was above board. Hashtag impressive. Fuck me. Starwater, whoever the fuck you are, well done. God damn, dude. We have a tight race. For most total kills on a tournament with Lord Darkness, edgy boy, carrying a narrow lead over Michael Wisefoot and Roger, all with over 14,000 kills. Holy shit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who am I kidding? There's no ladies here. Well, boys, what this indicates to me is that there is a serious dedication to this game. You don't create 50,000 tier 1 swords unless you're really into a goddamn game. You don't kill 14,000 people unless you are damn dedicated. And it's not one person. It's not that one crazy person. It's three of them competing for that fucking title. Holy shit, that's good to see. That shows to me that there is already a dedicated player base. That there are already people playing the alpha right now who are just rubbing their balls all over everyone else who gets in their way. And that's always good to see. This is how legends are made. This is a kind of game where we will hear stories about this damn game into the future. This gives me that nostalgia boner that I've been missing for the longest time. Thanks for your continued support leading toward our launch. We have another big content beat before closed beta where the world will get much bigger, we'll add more magic, more quests, and corrupted invasions. If you haven't signed up yet for a chance to be randomly selected, you can do that here. I hope to see you in the alpha. Scott Lane, let me into the alpha. Come on, Scott Lane, just, I've signed up, please let me into the alpha, I'll suck your dick. But that was from Scott Lane, the game director of New World. Now that was quite great to see, that made me feel real good inside, that belayed a lot of my fears, they have a real good direction going here. They're making those big dick Chad energy moves. They're not backing down and they've got direction. That's what I like to see. They're putting their foot down and they're moving forward. That is how you build a great MMO. I see a good future here. I genuinely see a good future here and maybe I'm fanboying a bit. Maybe I'm just a little bit overexcited, but this all just looks so juicy to me. This looks like we're going to have a great time in New World. This looks like I'm going to be salty forever that I never got into the alpha, but I'm going to love this game. But that has been another little deep dive into New World and a little bit of a letter from the game director, Scott Lane. 
I hope you got some value out of this. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you have a great day because I'm having a brilliant one. I hope everything goes your way. I'm going to have to go find something to do with this hard on this letters just given me. So I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.